Hi, I'm Randy Wise. I'm the curator here at the Fremont County Pioneer Museum in Lander, Wyoming. Uh, one of the really significant landmarks near our area is the Oregon Trail, the Oregon California Trail, the Oregon California Utah Trail, the Emigrant Trail. It goes by a lot of different names. It didn't really come down into the valley where we're at, but it went right over South Pass, which is, as the crow flies, about 30 miles from where we're standing. So it's a very important part of Fremont County and Lander. Wyoming and American history. Uh, I would argue it's one of the most significant sites, particularly the South Pass itself. So everybody knows and has images of the wagon trains going across the sagebrush prairies and heading west. And that did happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a great image. It's really helped develop our country and create our country. But a lot of people didn't actually make it the whole journey. Uh, 500, 600,000 people may have traveled the emigrant trail over the course of its peak. I find it interesting that most people made the journey and alive and well, but a lot of people didn't. There were casualties along the way. A lot of things could happen on the trail. This is a six month plus journey uh, across essentially the wilderness at that point. Any number of things could happen. Ironically, Native Americans were a minor issue as far as causing problems or deaths on the trail. Very rare that there were any conflicts between the white immigrants and the Native Americans. What killed people were accidents. People got run over by wagons. They drowned at river crossings. They accidentally shot themselves or shot their compadres. Uh, women died in childbirth. But the biggest issue for immigrants as they'd made this journey was disease, particularly cholera. Folks in those days just didn't understand what cholera was, how it was prevented, and once the water sources got contaminated by human and animal waste, which there's tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of animals, only limited water sources, especially once you get into the arid part of the trail, which is western Nebraska, Wyoming, Idaho, that water could get polluted pretty quickly. And cholera was a very significant issue, killed many, many of the emigrants. The figures are, nobody really knows exactly how many people died on the trail. I've seen as uh, upwards of 50,000. Uh, there's a grave every half mile, something, you know, something to that effect. And there certainly were a lot of graves up there. Most of them are unmarked uh, because these folks were in a hurry. They had to get to California or Oregon or wherever they were going before winter. They did not have the time to stop, have a funeral, dig a deep grave, make a tombstone. Most of the people that died were buried right on the trail itself. They dug a hole, had a quick service, covered it over, and went on. And they did that primarily so people wouldn't disturb the grave of the body. So typically, the grave was a hastily dug affair in the soil, on the trail, and the, they hoped that the wagons would continue and just essentially obliterate traces of the grave. Now there are a couple of exceptions to this, and we are very fortunate here at the Lander Museum to have a wonderful example of an actual grave marker that was left on the emigrant trail. If you can see behind me, we have a map. In the blue, it shows the main route of the Oregon Trail, and in purple underneath it is called the Seminole Cutoff. There wasn't just one main road. There were lots of paths to get uh, across the, the Rockies. The Seminole Cutoff was one of them that a lot of immigrants took, and they had their reasons. Either the water was better, or there was a less of a grade, or any number of reasons people took alternate routes. Seminole Cutoff cuts off at Warm Springs, goes south of uh, the main Oregon Trail, and then reconnects uh, near Burnt Ranch, uh, where the lander uh, cutoff takes off from. On the uh, Seminole Cutoff, we have a verified uh, immigrant trail grave. We know who she is. We know when she died. Unfortunately, we don't know very much about her. But the neat part of the story to me is, Whoever she was traveling with, assuming it was her family, uh, clearly cared a great deal about this young woman because they took the time to actually make a stone marker. 
again, that's a pretty big time commitment for a group at this time when they had to be moving as much as they could to take the time to have a funeral. And we have a really interesting account of another party witnessing the, uh, uh, the funeral. Not only did they bury her with a funeral, they made a marker for her. And the marker is right here in our case. It was brought to us, so it's, it's not, this is the original marker and that has been verified as uh, thoroughly as it can be verified. We absolutely believe it is the original Sarah Thomas grave marker from the Seminole cutoff. Um, it's in the museum because we wanted to save it. Uh, things weather up in that country, things are damaged. When the headstone came to us in the late 60s, it was already broken in half and you can just barely see a little crack in it where we've kind of pieced it back together. There is a marker up there recognizing her grave. It's a reproduction that was put up. Um, but Sarah Thomas's family cared a great deal about her and they left this mon little tiny monument for her on the trail and then went on. Now, unfortunately, and we've done a lot of research on this, we have not been able to find out anything else about Sarah Thomas. But I am gonna read you the passage that was written by another emigrant. His name was Jacob Hayes. He was traveling in a different party along the Seminole Cutoff and he witnessed the burial of Sarah Thomas. So I'm gonna read you his uh, account. June 29th. 1854. Clear, but very windy. Traveled over some pretty rough roads, some 13 miles. Encamped for the night on Rock Creek. Witnessed the burial of a lady. Herded some cattle, some miles from the wagons to the left of the road where there is a noble spring. Spring near the road called Rock Springs or Immigrant Spring. Now the lady was Sarah Thomas. And again, we don't know a whole lot about her. Her headstone reads, and it's very hard to see, but it reads Sarah A. Thomas, D, for died, June 29th, age 22 and 54, for 1854 when she died. Uh, so again, pretty fascinating story that uh, 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 people took the time to do this. It's not the only marker on the Oregon Trail. It's one of the rare ones from the actual travel. Many times people would go back years later and mark a grave. So if you made it to Utah or California, maybe you remember burying your mother or your father, a lot of times people would come back and find as close as they could anyway and leave a marker. But So the grave is up there on the prairie. Locals know about it. Uh, you know, people have visited. That trail is still travelable by four-wheeler or ATV uh, or Jeep. Uh, fa fascinating country. So people knew about the grave, knew it was there, knew there was a marker. It actually wasn't this marker though, because at some point in the 1920s, we don't have a good date on this, somebody we suspect from her family came back and put up a bigger stone marker. And you'll see an image of that. That marker was put up again in the 20s. Uh, and this just ended up kind of in the sagebrush, uh, which probably is what saved it, <laughs> actually, from uh, further uh, destruction and weathering. In the 1960s, somebody dug up Sarah Thomas's grave. Again, I mentioned grave robbing earlier. This was a contemporary person, probably looking for artifacts or something like that, but they dug her bones up, what was left of them, just left the grave open, left them strewn on the prairie. A couple of local lander folks, uh, Joe Steinbright and Tom Bell, were up there you know, exploring the Oregon Trail. They were historians. They loved the Oregon Trail stories. They saw the open grave. That was Bureau of Land Management property at that time. So they came back to Lander, told the Bureau of Land Management. Bureau of Land Management just said, let's go back up there and reinter the, this body, uh, which they did. They went up, uh, reburied what was left of Sarah Thomas's remains. The headstone that from the 1920s had been broken. So Tom and Joe created a third headstone, very similar to the one from the 20s, and left it there. And you'll see images of that as well. That is the headstone that is still marking the site of Sarah Thomas's grave today. Uh, it's a beautiful, lonely spot up in the prairie, uh, and a really interesting story. Again, the casualty rate on the trail was pretty high, but most people did make it. Thank you.